Okay, uh, welcome back. So, um, where we were the last time is we're making our top down shooter here, and we added the projectile system. So, if I hit play, you'll see that we've got our projectiles. There's a couple problems though. Uh, one, we have a memory leak. Uh, the reason that it's a memory leak is because if I go down here to my very first projectile, uh, if I unpause it, you can see it's got this, like, it just keeps going and going and going. We're still allocating resources to it. What a memory leak is, is if you have something that is taking memory that doesn't need to, uh, and it will continuously take more and more memory, and as it does that, it'll make even a fast computer uh, process things slowly. So that's what this is. All of these little clones of our ship regular fire, and we just make more of them, Unity keeps track of where they are despite the fact that they're very far off screen. So that's a memory leak. We're going to fix that. Second, um, they're not moving in a nice neat uh, spread formation. Instead they're making these essentially a right triangle. And there's a reason they're making a right triangle. Um, so to explain why and how we can fix this, let's talk about trigonometry. So, but, oh, there we go, there's my camera. All right, so the problem is, as we're firing them, we've got our little ship here with this little fire point. The way that we set up our velocity system is we have, this is going out straight zero speed is the vector for that. So zero on the y-axis, and then whatever we set our speed to, or sorry, zero on the x-axis, whatever we set our speed to on the y-axis. The way I set the one that's on the right side and the left side is I made its x and y component speed. So it's actually traveling farther in the same amount of time because it's going speed here and speed here. Same thing on here. It's going a farther distance, so you can see the way I drew this, this is definitely farther um, because it's traveling speed on both the x and y axis. And so this hypotenuse, the right triangle, is its actual travel, which is why it's making these like flat lines when we want it to be more of like a spread. So there's two ways we can fix this. One, we could use the Pythagorean formula to find out what this should really be. If we really want it to have a length of speed here in these two, uh, we can find out what those should be. That's hard, and <laughs> mathematicians are pretty lazy. So Unity actually has something built in that what it will do is it'll take this right triangle here, where we've got speed by speed, and then turn the vector that connects them into one, and then we can just multiply that by whatever our speed factor is. Let me show you what I mean. So if we jump back into Unity, actually, let's unpause this and get out of play. If I go back into Visual Studio, uh, I'm going to go into my laser controller. I'll unbiggen this just a little bit. There we go. Now, the case zero, when it's firing straight up, that one's perfectly fine. I don't need to change anything there. It's case one and case two I do need to change. So in case one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a dot normalized, which is going to change it to so that its hypotenuse is equal to one. Um, and then it'll change those x and y values to make it so that the hypotenuse is equal to 1. Um, and then I want to do times speed. So now the hypotenuse isn't equal to 1, the hypotenuse is equal to the speed, just like it is above. So again, dot normalized times speed. Uh, okay, so I'll save this, jump back into Unity. I'm going to hit play as soon as it starts compiling down here. All right, so I'm going to play this and. <laughs> All right, so you can see now, if I pause it now, there's a nice, neat actual arc to all of these. They're spreading the way that they should, and that's because of that normalized function. Now we still have our. Um, memory leak. So I'm going to fix that here. Uh, so how we're going to do that, there's a bunch of different ways that you can fix this. I'm going to do the memory intensive way first, 
Uh, and then later on in a later video, I'll show you the, the nice way, the way that's nice and kind to memory. So what I'm gonna do is in this laser controller script again, I'm gonna add another header, because this is something different. So we'll say header lifetime. And I'm gonna create a public and a private float again. So public float, oops. And I'll call this lifetime. And private float, lifetime seconds. So what I'm gonna do here in the start method is I'm gonna set lifetime seconds. We talked about this last time, how I'm creating a private counter to go to the public counter. Actually, in this case, I don't actually need the private one because I don't need to reset it. So I'm just gonna delete this there and I'm gonna get rid of this private variable because I don't actually need it. Huh, I wasn't thinking. So I go down here to update. I'm gonna add uh, lifetime minus equals time dot delta time, which is the time since the last frame. And then we'll say if lifetime is less than or equal to zero, then, oops, then we want to destroy this object. So we'll do destroy, and I don't have to, I can just say like destroy, but I like to actually tell it to destroy this object. So this dot game object, and it's lowercase g when you're talking about the game object itself. So I'll save this script, pop back into Unity, I'll let it compile for a second, and I should see my little lifetime show up over here. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Oops. Did I not put it in the right place? I put it in here. Public float lifetime. That's weird. Laser controllers, yes. Go back to Unity. Oh, because <laughs> I'm looking at the player. Ugh. Good lord. Let's get our laser controller. There we go. I'm going to give it a lifetime of one second. Um, I haven't tested this yet, so one second might be too much or too little, but let's see. So if I hit play, uh, all right. Oh, no, one second is actually too little. So let's make this two seconds. And let's see how that is. If I go from down here, uh, it's still a little too short. Let's say 2.5. That's better. All right, so this is the memory intensive way to do it. Um, I'll show you a way to do this using object pooling next time, which is a lot kinder. There's one more thing I want to do. I still don't like how big this ship fire is. So I'm going to go to my art and the pixel art that I'm using for this, and I'm going to cut it in half again. So my pixels per unit, I'm going to set to 128. I'll apply that. And now, if I go to my prefabs, I'm going to have to resize. That's a better start. To, that's a better size to start with. I'm going to have to resize the collider. So if I go to, I just drag one of these in my scene. You see the collider is still the same size it was. I'm going to make this 0.1 on the x-axis, and we'll do 0.3. Uh, 0.25 on y. If I zoom in. Yeah, that's good. Um, now, because I just made these changes to this version of ship regular fire, if I don't apply them to the uh, prefab, then it won't actually stick. So I'm going to click apply to make sure that any changes I make to this apply to the prefab. And then I'll delete this. And let's hit play again. Uh, da, 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 da. That's better. And this gives us some room to have the player actually improve their, their ship as they go. Okay, cool. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I know it's a short one today. Um, if you learned anything, though, feel free to give me a like. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section down below. Um, otherwise, 
have a wonderful day.